for our last video of chapter 22 and organic chemistry too, uh, we're going to look at um, a few more types of these enolate reactions. The first one we're going to look at is um, reacting enolates with uh, a different sort of functional group, kind of like a protecting group, called an enamine which you can imagine, right, is an alkene with an amine. So we'll, we'll get to there in a second, but there are some problems with the uh, these alpha alkylation reactions, right? Um, one that we talked about pretty briefly is this concept of orth or oxygen alkylation, right, where when we have our enolate, this is just an example enolate here, uh, right, usually the nucleophilic carbon is the thing that attacks, but we can also potentially and this is kind of condition dependent. Um, we can also have this oxygen be the nucleophile instead, right? Where the oxygen gets alkylated. It's not super common, you know, again, depending on the conditions, but it is a uh, potential problem that can occur. The other more valid problem is something called polyalkylation, kind of like what we saw with Friedel-Craft alkylation, in that um, if we have some sort of ketone and we have sodium hydride or whatever base we want to use, iodomethane, um, what occurs is once we alkylate, where we do our, our uh, alpha alkylation, right? We form our enolate with our base, and then we have that nucleophilic carbon attack our CH3. What happens now, right, is that the enolate that forms afterwards, right, if this was to react again, because we still have a hydrogen here that's present, and on the other side, we've actually made that right side more reactive now, right? Remember that enolate that forms, that alkene that forms, is going to be more substituted, it's more stable, right, following Zaitsev's rules. So we've made this more reactive towards forming the enolate. So what happens is this will just occur over and over again. We'll get a wide mixture of products where we might just totally over alkylate each side. Right? These are some realistic problems that can occur. Okay. Um, so how do we avoid that? Right. So we can do something similar to what we've seen before with protecting groups using enamines. So um, enamines and protecting groups in general, um, right, their purpose is to stop side reactions from occurring. So if we had the following um, ketone here, right, and we wanted to do, right, some sort of alkylation, one thing we can do to protect it is to add an amine. And this is very similar to our uh, diol protection, right, where we had, right, these conditions here, and we're going to do essentially the same thing, right, a little bit of the special toxic acid, our amine here, and the product we generate is this. We make this quaternary amine. And this can um, tautomerize as well, right from the quaternary amine to the enamine, which it does very similar stuff or similar chemistry to carbonyls. Right, just like that. Um, and so, uh, right, we have our, now we have our enamine, right, with right, our nucleophilic carbon being here. So if we were to do a reaction like this, um, right, and we were worried about overalkylation, and we'll do an example down below, what we could do to solve this issue is to, right, take that carbonyl, protect it, 
right, to make your enemine, and then um, add in our alkylation, right, so we'll just use our same methyl uh, alkylation that we were doing before. And the product we would get after these two steps, right, is we would form that uh, quaternary amine, um, and then we would do that uh, addition, right? So our product here looks like this, right, with that methyl group there. And that actually limits um, the reaction, right? It helps to kind of stop it from, from over occurring, okay? So it kind of closes it off there. So we get uh, little to no side products. And then finally, just like with the acetal protecting group, we can just use acid and it removes, or rather, right, it undergoes this mechanism where we're effectively having water come in, displace that amine or that quaternary amine to get back to our desired ketone. And it kind of stops the reaction there. So it's limiting the side products that we generate due to that uh, quaternary amine uh, that we have present. All right, the last reaction we're going to look at is something called, uh, it's called a Michael addition, um, but more specifically, it's something called a conjugate addition, meaning, right, we're adding, we're adding to something in conjugation, right, or uh, resonance, right, something in resonance with a carbonyl. Right. More specifically, right, these alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyls. So the reaction um, is as follows, where we have some sort of alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl, right, just like this. And this is also something we can call a Michael acceptor. And it's actually, uh, we could also call this a beta addition if we wanted, right, where the beta carbon, right, which is two away from the carbonyl, is the nucleophilic site. Because if we're looking at the resonance structure of this, right, pushing those electrons down the line, we have a positive charge at the end of that uh, alkene, right? So that's what makes a site the most um, nucleophilic, or electrophilic, sorry, and if we were to combine right, our Michael acceptor with a nucleophile, right, with these two hydrogens present here, right, and some sort of base as our catalyst, we would generate the following molecule. Where it's very similar chemistry, where we have um, right, essentially affixed the Michael acceptor to our uh, nucleophile. And so what does the mechanism for this look like specifically? So I'm going to skip the deprotonation step. Right, so we have our ester here, right, of course we're going to make our enolate with our base, so I'm just going to, we've done that a million times. Um, but now, right, in chemistry that hopefully isn't too wholly unfamiliar, we're going to do a, right, nucleophilic addition, right, with an enolate, as we've seen so many times before, with a Michael acceptor now, and that red arrow, right, our, our nucleophile is going to attack that Michael acceptor spot, right, the spot right there. to generate our intermediate. Right, and so now we have that enolate kind of hanging off at the end here. And this will quench itself by grabbing some sort of hydrogen 
It could be water, it could be whatever, or it could even be the compound at the start, right? So we could say that this grabs that proton there to make the original enolate. Okay, again, getting us to our final product up there. Um, for another example, where we have some sort of carbonyl, we have some sort of Michael acceptor, right, like this. Again, right, beta carbon, alpha carbon, with some base that's present. Again, we only need a small amount, right, because we can get this sort of situation occurring where we have the uh, enolate that gets formed in the course of the reaction actually end up attacking the original um, carbonyl to make the enolate. And then we get to our final product here. Right, with our alpha position and beta position still present. Also notice, right, this distance now between the two carbonyls. They're not right next to each other like we've seen with the aldol, the Claisen condensation, where we can get things like an alkene form, right? There's, there's too much space between our different carbon sources here, or our carbonyls here, so we can't really get any of this um, reactivity occurring. Actually, we'll add catalytic amount here and also here, right, because we don't really need too much of this base because it sort of self-catalyzes, right, the negatively charged enolate we form will end up sort of progress the uh, previous reaction. Okay, so for the last thing we'll look at here um, is something called a Robinson annulation. Okay, notice at the bottom I've already drawn out the mechanism because it's really long and lengthy. I'm not going to sit here in silence and do the mechanism out, um, but I'll go through it in a minute here. So Robinson annulation is essentially just a fancy way to say Michael addition and then a aldol condensation. And this terminology here, annulation, is uh, sort of old school terminology for making a ring. Right, so we're making a ring with a Michael addition and then aldol condensation. Robinson is just some, you know, old white dude that coined this terminology, just like, you know, the Michael edition was named after some rich old dude named Michael. Um, so, for example, this Robinson annulation, and this is really the, uh, it's a trickier reaction, right? And this would be the sort of thing you would see if we had organic chemistry three or advanced organic chemistry. We'd be looking at a lot of these quote unquote named reaction. Um, that are interesting, I think, in a lot of ways, um, but right, they're awfully tricky and require a lot of, of terminology. Um, so for this Robinson annulation, we have to do the following, right? We do a Michael addition and then we do an aldol condensation, okay? And so for the first couple of steps here, where we have our Michael acceptor, right, that alpha, beta, unsaturated, um, carbonyl here, and then right, we have our, our uh, base towards the bottom. And so what happens is right, we do that alpha, beta, unsaturated uh, carbonyl chemistry, and we're going to combine them. And we'll see it all the way through the mechanism in a minute here. Right where we have that um, alpha beta carbon end up right here and here. I'm going to change the thickness of my pen for a second, sorry. Right here and here. Um, and then from there, right, we've done the Michael addition, right, we've attached these two groups together, and then we end up doing. Uh, this aldol condensation in a ring, right? This aldol sort of annulation where we include base, heat, um, and then, right, some sort of acid or just water. Um, and we end up forming 
the following. Right, so if you notice, um, right, we formed an alkene here at the end, just like we've seen with aldol al al condensation. Right? We have these forcing conditions that we're using to make this uh, alkene here. Right, so the aldol condensation is what occurred to bring these two groups together at the end. Um, all right, so if we're looking at the mechanism here, right, and we're going to go through this step by step, right, this first part here to make our intermediate, right, we are forming, right, our enolate, right, comes back down, right, and we're doing this Michael addition. I'm going to do this in a different color, right, we're doing this Michael addition here. Right, and then this next step, um, right, we're doing our, uh, right now we're quenching it, right, then we're generating an enolate this way. See that, notice we had the enolate here originally, and then we quench it, and then when we reform the enolate, we can't just keep it like this, because we can't make this small, like this would make a four membered ring, right, if we were to do the aldol, aldol condensation this way, we have to make sure we're doing a six membered ring. Right, because a six-membered ring is much more stable than a four-membered ring. Okay, so this is where this aldol condensation is occurring. Right, to attach to have the nucleophilic carbon attached to the electrophilic carbon to get to here. Sorry, uh, to get to here. Right, and then we do this final step where we are using heat. Right, we're forcing these conditions to right, form this alkene to get to our product up here, which I realize I've drawn incorrectly. Right, we have a methyl group here. Sorry about that. Um, right, so this gets us to our final product here. So right, this is obviously a, a big mechanism. Right, there's a lot going on here. Um, so it's kind of important to kind of go through and make sure right we're noting things as they come up. Right, we know that we are. Um, Right, this Michael addition here, right, we formed, um, right, that new carbon carbon bond between these two groups for our aldol annulation. Um, right, the enolate here, right, is now um, here, right, that new bond we've made down below is here, right. So it's important to, get to keep track of these atoms as we're going through and using, you know, highlighters or numbering to kind of keeping track of the carbon because there's a lot going on, right? Um, so yeah, definitely take a minute here and kind of really assess this mechanism. Um, but keep in mind that this is just, right, I can add on however many groups I want, but this is essentially just a Michael addition, then a aldol condensation, okay? This is all chemistry we've seen before, just we're kind of compiling them in this uh, cascade type reaction, or this domino reaction where one thing occurs and then the other thing occurs.